So welcome back to another episode of Bourbon Buddies. And tonight, oh, it's nighttime now. Yeah, it looks like nighttime, huh? We're doing something a little different. We definitely are. This is a different setup, different different uh, stuff in the glass. I was say different beverage, different everything. So just something that kind of came up. Mm-hmm. Neil came over and uh, we're chilling here in the garage or basement, kind of slash both. Quasi. 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 Yeah, quasi. And he brought scotches over and he said he's been digging the scotch lately. Yeah. Or just dabbling in. So it came up a good point of why one would should do that and actually branch out a little bit. And even though you might be a bourbon guy, which we typically are, but why would somebody do that? What is the point of doing that? What are the benefits of doing that? And I feel like there are actually some benefits. Yeah, there's a lot to talk about with that topic, and we've probably have talked about it before. I think I we think. have. We've, we've touched on it. I think a lot of and a lot of people also, I think, clamor about it and talk about it because you know you have Team Scotch, Team Irish, Team Canadian, maybe. Doubt it. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> and then you know Team, you know American or Bourbon, whatever. You know. Yeah. Obviously, in America, there's more than just bourbon, but but you know it brings up these uh, you know different stylistic uh, things going on. But when you really think about it, buddy, and you know what? When I start thinking about things, hey, we're thinking about it now. We're thinking about it now. Um, I mean, it's it's whiskey. It's all whiskey, right? Right, right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's kind of how I look at it. And even though, um, but with like anything, mm-hmm. there's gonna be things you like, things you don't. And what I found is that you really can't, with with like, we, we, you know, we experience it with wine. Oh, I don't like this grape. Well, you might typically not that like that grape. Yeah, but I mean, I was dead set against Cab Franc. Oh yeah, you were. And Neil very finally, it. he loves Cab Franc, and he <laughs> snuck on in on me, and I had no idea that it was a Cab Franc. It took a while because I could pick yeah. it up in just about anything, even Bordeaux blends and everything. I'd be like, oh. You got that uh, green, pe- it's like a green pepper. It's just a um, weird thing, but. Yeah, pyrazine kind of, yeah. Yep. But anyway, so if if you kind of limit yourself, you sort of miss out. Or if you say, hey, I'm only gonna drink scotch, or I'm only gonna drink bourbon. And and I know we've we've made fun of just like uh, the scotch drinkers a little bit. Um, I personally know some that are like, oh, well, if it's not scotch, it's like, <laughs> you know, and it's just ridiculous. But it is nice to step into something different because when you go back, yeah, it's almost like cross training. Oh, I like the, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, I like the analogy. Yeah, yeah. it's almost like cross training for yeah. something. So if you do something else, when you come back, sometimes you're better, stronger, have another mm-hmm. appreciation, whatever it is you're doing, because you've experienced something different. And it's not, you know, it's not the same old, same old, same old all the time. Absolutely. I think it, and you know what? This goes into the wine world, the beer world, the spirit world. Um, spirit around, buddy. Spirit around. <laughs> Floating up. Uh, and it even gets into the food realm because yeah, a lot of people will go, I hate Brussels sprouts. Right? Yeah. A lot of people will go. <laughs> <laughs> I did not know he hated Brussels sprouts, everybody. Um, I eat them now. But See, I'll, I'll, t- I'll tell you the story in a minute. Oh, I got to hear that story. But kind of saying about with the Brussels sprouts is that, you know, if you have Brussels, Brussels sprouts a certain way, that's right, it. it. That's all you remember, and you go, uh, oh, I hate them, right? God, um, but if you Brussels sprout the whole thing, if oh. you go Brussels sprouts and you roast them and you do it with bacon, you get a little bit of the fatness in there, and also Brussels sprouts <laughs> to get rid of, I know, bacon. right? <laughs> To get rid of some of the bitterness, you gotta hit it with some acidity, right? Pop a little bit of lemon juice on there, and then you start to kind of make things happen. So then your eyes kind of open up. So just like you were saying with cross training, you could do it. You're cross training your palate. You are, absolutely. And your palate, you know, drinking stuff and eating stuff and all that kind of thing going on. um, All changes your palate. I mean, we all know with kids, you know, we all hated broccoli and all that oh, crap, God, right? Oh, I got stories about that. Oh, man. Yeah, my dad. Man, I still don't like broccoli. Pissed. Okay, so Brussels sprouts, I had them. They chopped them up, 
and like sauteed them in a pan with like lemon butter. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. it was lemon butter or some lemon salt maybe, something. But they were chopped up and sauteed. So it wasn't like this big nasty ball of bitterness that you were- Sign me up, buddy. Right, it, it was good. <laughs> yeah. It was really good. So I, I that analogy actually struck home. Now, as far as broccoli, I still to this day, I freaking hated it. And I've tried, I ate a little bit the other night, but I mean, I was like eating it just to get it off the plate. <laughs> You know what I mean? You're like, like you're like an eight year old kid <laughs> trying to get oh, the broccoli off the plate. I love it. I'm telling you, this this is true, and my parents will contest to this. <laughs> I used to sit at the table. I was the last one at the table. Yeah. And I would actually, they didn't know this at the time, but they do know it now. But I would actually put the broccoli in my pocket <laughs> and go flush it down the toilet. <laughs> Oh, I hated it. And I gave it to the dog. And our dog lady used to sit right next to me. Wonder just, why. Just <laughs> waiting for scrap things. It was usually the vegetables. But now that I'm older, um, I eat a lot of vegetables. So and so there's a point. I mean, we kind of went off yeah. the path there about Brussels sprouts and broccoli. But I eat vegetables now, and I never did. Now, you every know? time now, I'm going to check your pockets just to make sure you don't you have vegetables. Can, yeah, you can re dig around there if you want. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I, you know, they, they, I don't know who says this. Don't you, Whoever you, they are. Yeah, haven't you ever heard this? Or they said this. I'm sure everybody that's watching has heard this, that every seven years, you like change, you like your body changes everything. Like your taste changes. Your... Well, I, I was told that like after like seven years, all the cells in your body are new. Okay. Or something so then, like that. But yeah, I've heard like, that would make sense then. And maybe if your palate changed, like what you like to eat or what you like to drink. Like, let's say I like to drink you know, uh, milk from a from a gopher, right? Right. And now I'm like, oh, you know what? And I'm like gopher, gopher milk. milk right now. Yeah. Now, now I want deer milk or something. You know okay. I mean? oh, fair enough. Hey, whatever works for you, man. Did you drink deer milk? Has anyone ever done that? I would imagine it's been done somewhere. Was like, it? Maybe they raised reindeer, caribou, and then drinking the milk because they don't have cattle. I don't know. Somebody, please, in the comments, have you ever drank deer's milk? Um, I, mean, I, don't think, I don't think you could go out right now and milk a deer. I think that'd be pretty hard to get a hold of her. Yeah, they might buck you a little bit. It might be a little bit. Yeah, they might buck you. But the point of all this <laughs> is, <laughs> is to definitely try things that maybe are just a little bit out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. You don't have to dive in, but just like crazy, but just... Like I was trying cognac stuff for a while, especially when me and my wife were in Canada. We were like, oh, you know, it's, 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 you find a lot more of them up there. So it was like, all yeah. right, let's try this because, and some of them were really good. Now I haven't been able to find some of the ones that I've liked here, but right. some of them are really good. So that's one thing they definitely got going on up there is, I would say, I'm sure there's Canadian whiskey that I would like. I have oh, not yeah. had any yet, but I'm sure there's something, so I'm open to it. Absolutely. But. That'd be another blind expedition for me to maybe venture into with you, buddy. Yeah. Get like Canadian, put a Canadian in there, and you'd be like, oh, this is awesome. And then I got you. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, if you just give it a shot, I mean, and granted, mm -hmm. there's such a broad spectrum of scotch, too. Oh, my God. I mean, you're absolutely right. Huge, I mean, huge spectrum. I mean, what we're drinking right now is we got two different... Two different scotches that are from different places. So you got Akintoshin, which is from the Lowlands, which you don't really see too many. I haven't seen many Lowlands. This is the first yeah. one I've had tonight. And so. this is triple distilled, but then it's finished in three different kinds of wood. So the first one is uh, our ex-bourbon cast for 10 years, and then it goes into Oloroso Sherry casts, and then Pedro Jimenez casts Sherry. So different Sherry casts tend to put off different things, and it, it's, it's really very complex, but it's yeah. good. It's and very good. I dude, mean, I think anybody dark. who likes whiskey at all could at least appreciate it. It might not be your yeah. thing, but you can appreciate it. That's got layers of stuff going on. Layers. There. Brown sugars, chocolate, this like walnut kind of thing going on. Uh, pipe tobacco. Um, I mean, geez, I mean, the list goes on. And then yeah. you got Speyside. I'm a Speyside fan, typically. Yeah. Um, if I had to pick, that's the ones I tend to like are typically space side. Um, like I said, this is the first Lowland I've had, and you don't—you're right—you don't see many of them. So, um, 
Yeah, I think Space Side is a good place for bourbon drinkers to dabble into. It's a good happy place. You know? Yeah. It um, is. It's everything's very rounded and balanced. Nothing is it's not like a big peat thing that's gonna punch you in the face with no. that or anything. Yeah, they might put small amounts of peat in there. Yeah. I but, know I know um that they used to be in um Space Side, it used to be pretty much I think from what I I remember hearing it was it was mostly um peated. Um, but then that kind of got away, they got away from that. Oh, like original. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't I know, know how some true of the islas and stuff I've had been like, like yeah, Pete, like um, Lafroy. If you go like Art yeah, Bay, yeah, uh, Bunahaven. Well, Bunahaven's more. That's a little different. I shouldn't put that in that in that category. But um, I've had the Lafroy, and that was just like I think it was Lafroy, and I was just like, oh, it smells like like rained on campfire. And I was just like, yes. Oh. See, I'm or somebody pissed on the campfire. And was like, <laughs> oh. And had like some like. Crazy like acid in their piss, like <laughs> hydrochloride or something. It was just really smoky, and I was like, eh, maybe if I was in the right mood, maybe. But that that was tough for me, man. That was, that like was a, really tough. It's like a mermaid's bathwater, buddy. Smoky. It is. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm actually a huge Pete fan. I like the. Uh, I, I like going kind of to the ends of each spectrum and seeing what it's all about. Like going, kind of going, all right, well, what is all this smokiness all about? And I'm like, I, I go for it, right? Okay. Um, I, I kind of go to the ends and then eventually I start to end up kind of in the middle. All right. So, so you're exploring to the extreme. Yes. Like what are the extreme ends? What is right. what is peaty and smoky? And what, so I'm going to go all the way down that and what what's unpeated and... Yeah, 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 yeah. And, fruity or whatever and go all the way down that end. I got you. But I mean, getting back to our point, buddy, kind of what you were saying, the huge part of this is that if you, let's say that you take a break from bourbon, right? Yeah. Um, just for, let's say like two weeks and you go, you know what? I'm not going to drink any of my bourbon for two weeks. I'm going to go out and get a scotch or I'm going to go out and get, you know, an Irish whiskey or I'm going to go out and get, you know, something from Canada or whatever the hell it is, right? India, who knows? So you grab that whiskey and you go, whoa, this is really different. What am I noticing here? Right. Do it I almost, like it? It almost kind of tunes your palate up a little bit. It does, because when you go back to the bourbon, you go, holy moly. Right, and certain things you'll notice more. It just, yeah. I think giving it a, your palate, like, I don't want to say a break, but just like a shock. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's, it's, like, it's like doing the same workout over and over and over again. Eventually, you sort of plateau. So your yeah. palate, I would imagine, would plateau. Absolutely. So why not? You know, change it up a little bit and see see what happens. And I think, even though I'm, I'm a bourbon lover, I, mm -hmm. I tend to appreciate it a little bit more. I enjoy like the Scotch or the Irish for a while, and then I'm just kind of like, man, I really want, I really want those bourbon notes again. And when you get them, you appreciate it that much more. So that's my thought on the whole thing: is dabble your toes in a little bit. Yeah, you know? keep your. I've heard this before. A couple people say this is keep your palate alive. And what they mean mm. by that is that, you know, I, I know with a lot of wine sommeliers, what they do is they go to a market, right? They go to a market, just whatever, whatever, if it's like, you know, in town market with a bunch of vegetables, and they just go around and they smell everything. I wouldn't recommend doing that today in no, the times that we're in right not. now. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but that's what they do. They go around and smell everything they make sure that they're they have a reference of things because you know everyone thinks oh well I, you know i don't know how to point out notes and all that all that stuff's learned that's an all that's a whole learned thing that people do yeah i agree they, you know what i mean so yeah. if you don't keep your palate moving like saying oh well what does um like a you know, a, a violet smell like, if you're gonna point that out. Right. Or what does a rose smell like? Because a lot of people, you know, Get four roses, ha uh, ha ha, right? Right. But it actually does have a very, you know, like a floral note to it. That right. if you don't smell those things, how are you going to know what they smell like? Right. You know, you know, right. so. I mean, yeah, you can, you can, you can exercise your palate by kind of just re reinforcing the smell with the brain and then the yeah. taste, like fruits and all that stuff, notes that are picked up. Smell and memory are like this, and smell needs a reference um, to a memory. Because did you ever notice when you go somewhere and you smell something? It can and take it's you like, back to a place or yeah. whatever. Yeah, 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 absolutely. 
It's crazy, isn't it? So they're again dabbling in something else and saying, oh, well, I, I noticed this, I'm noticing that, I'm, you know, different spices. And sometimes just you mm -hmm. may pick up a note that you've uh, had before. Yeah. But it now seems uh, a different expression of it because it's now in a different spirit. So it's, it's not, it's not just kind of mudded in with what you're used to, if that makes sense, if I explain that right. That makes total sense. All right, so. Yeah, you can definitely want to Definitely want to exercise your palate and do those kind of things and change it up a little bit. So that's what we're doing. Right now, yep. actually, as we speak. Yep, we're, extra, <laughs> we're working out. We're basically working out. This is, this is a good workout right yeah. here. <laughs> I should be able to work out like this all the time. I think I'd, <laughs> I think I would more than just plateau though. I think I would probably go in the wrong direction. Yeah, you might. Yeah, you might. You might go if into you worked the... out like this all the time. <laughs> Cat's, Cat's getting into stuff. <laughs> Dude, she's getting nuts right now. Oh, this is fun. Yeah, I appreciate this, buddy. Yeah. Bring the scotch over. We were dabbling in some Irish for St. Patty's Day. Yep. We did dabble in that. As um, one must. Yeah, it's only right. It it's is. only the right thing to do. But um, let us know what you think and, and the, what it is that you do to uh, maybe break it up. Maybe do you taste things that are in bourbon? Like when was the last time you tasted like something like vanilla? Yeah, or absolutely. You, do you have man. a piece of caramel just to remind yourself of exactly that caramel note or chocolate mm. um, or whatever, just to kind of tune it in? Because so many times I have tried something and there's yeah. a note there and I can I know it and I can't place it oh, I hate oh, that, that feeling crazy where it's like oh, I'm my wife will usually be like oh that's I'm like, yep, that's it, it. <laughs> yep she nails it so like um that's like my well she gets really mad because when I I'm trying to think of a, of a scent I'm like wait a minute I think this smells like allspice right so I go in the spice cabinet and I start smelling all these spices. She's like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> smell, open them up, smell them all. It's like, like a pretty good like, hound <laughs> dog, like <laughs> tracking this down. I am, I'm, I'm like, I have like ground cinnamon and I got nutmeg. I'm like smelling both. I'm like, it's like, you know, and then she's just looking at me like a complete asshole. <laughs> but, you know, you got to do what you, you got to do. You got to do what you got to do. You got to yeah. make the sacrifice. The better the journey for yourself, you got to do it. So. Yeah, if, you, if your nose is stuck in that pantry, then... So be, so be it. Yeah. yeah. So from the bourbon buddies, let us know what you think. Um, if you're enjoying the content, hit, please hit the subscribe button. And uh, we look forward to hearing what you guys have to say in the comments. Uh, we're having a lot of fun. We thank you for all the support. And until next time, cheers. Cheers.